And let's begin with a word of prayer. Oh, Father, sometimes we act like Saul. And, and we just don't listen to you. We don't pay attention. We don't want to. We kind of get blinded to you. Well, Father, if that happens, wake us up. Give us sight so that we may again follow your will. In this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. The Christ appears to Saul. Acts 9, 1 through 9, and Acts 22, 4 through 11. I can take that 9. Okay, I can get 22. Okay. And I'll take whatever's left over. Something's bound to pop up. <laughs> it's late September of 32. And he's going to be on the road to Damascus, Syria. Syria. In the spring of 32 AD, the Hellenistic followers of the Way left the Jerusalem area and moved throughout Judea, Samaria, and the Decapolis, and elsewhere. So you have Judea down here, Samaria here, the Decapolis over here, Galilee, and other areas, and they started spreading out for some particular reason. And that reason was they were being pursued, even in those places, by representatives of the religious authorities in Jerusalem. The sect must be stopped. So they're being pursued. Now that means they're spreading out all over the area. That's God's plan. You don't like to hear about that, but it's like when he erases the Assyrians or the Babylonians to wake up his people because they're not paying attention. Well, he needs to have them spread around. And so this is what happens. Any question or thought? Would that have been like a, you know, you talk about them being spread around, would that have been at the time like, I'm thinking of Pentecost where when they were given the, the um, Holy Spirit, they would have gotten their travel orders, if you will, at the same time? No. Their travel orders came in the, in the um, form of being killed if they're staying around, or being beat up, or something like that. That gives them their travel orders. Well, Jesus had given them the he travel orders, you know, yeah. go into all the world, preach the gospel, you know, uh, da 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 da. But the persecution, I ain't going nowhere. But the persecution was the physical danger that made them have to leave. Yeah. Okay, that's the idea. Um, I re I simply phrase it as though they're being they're going around, but they're being they're scared. They're getting out of the, getting out of there. Well, also, this time in history, you had the Roman Empire who made travel um, uniform where people could go from places more easily. Yes. Uh, a lot of language similarities. Yes. So they had a lot of, of things that happened to make it possible to spread the word. Correct. That's time you have, is perfect. You have the roads, you have the Pax Romana, you have Koine Greek, or such. You have all these things, these Shipping. factors, and a persecution. Okay? All right, here we go. Acts 9, 1 and 2. But Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters <coughs> to synagogues at Damascus, so that if he found any belonging to the way, men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. Okay, what does that tell you? Well, it's certainly a persecution, <laughs> and, and it tells you that it was uh, bought into by the upper uh, uh, rulers. Right, the religious and, authorities, Yeah, and, which and, remember are both religious and secular. It's the whole combination. Yeah. And of course, that also tells you that Saul was zealous about what he's doing. Oh, yeah. He wasn't 
probably getting paid much, if anything, for this. I, I, you know, I hadn't thought about that. I would say he's not getting paid much of anything. Yeah. It's just something he totally believes in. Totally. And he has a relationship with Syria, uh, with Damascus, while others are being pursued in other places by other people. This is a full out, let's go get them kind of thing, it seems to me. Okay, anything else? Go ahead. No, no, I just oh. said everything I was going to say. Oh, okay. Well, the, the other thing, talking about uh, persecuting both men and women, they were specific about that. Yes, that means the children too. Yeah, oh sure. Are sucked into this for some reason. So this is, uh, this is after the both, not just men, men and women. Good to have equality here. Relentless. Yes. And what was he to do? Drag him away bound. He used to tie him up and haul him back to Jerusalem for questioning. Okay, now this is Luke putting together here in Acts nine. He's he's putting together this story, this, but it's also done elsewhere as well. Oops, Acts twenty two four through five. I persecuted this way up to the point of death by binding both men and women and putting them to pr in prison. As the high priest and the whole council of the elders can testify about me, from them I also received letters to the brothers in Damascus, and I went there in order to bind those who were there and to bring them back to Jerusalem for punishment. Okay, so this is Paul's account of it. So Paul. Saul becomes Paul. This Paul's account of his personal statements. This, uh, he's, this is what I... So Luke has two things. He has the general story, and he has <clears throat> Paul's account of it. Okay, or Saul's. And I had never perceived this before. He's done this before. He pers persecuted them to death, and Even they can death. testify. From him, and he also received letters for Damascus. Right. This is something he's been doing. Right. I it's... never realized that before. Yes. Good. Excellent. Okay. He's got pretty good at it. But you gotta wonder inside if he really realized that it was wrong, and that he was finding, you know, like one of the letters so that he could justify. It. No. No. The letters. Let me explain that. In September of 32, while Philip was speaking to the Ethiopian eunuch, this happening at the same time, Saul, who had been collecting information about Hellenistic followers that had attended the festival of booths, went to the religious authorities to get permission to pursue the followers of the way that went to Damascus, Syria, spread the heresy. So he needs their official permission. Okay, that there's a reason for that. No, well, he's, if he's got a document that he can show to the people where he goes, Correct. look, we have authority here. Correct. And he's going to need that when he gets to Syria, to Damascus. He's going to have to have this, he's going to have to have these letters of introduction, essentially. And this is what I'm allowed to do. This is what they want me to do if it's okay with you. Okay? While others would pursue followers of the way in Judea and Samaria, the letters he received allow Saul to arrest and bring Hellenistic Jews back to Jerusalem for questioning, provided he had the approval of the authorities that ruled Damascus. And that's why the letters are there. He, they need that from Jerusalem authorities, not just some guy coming out and grabbing people. Okay? Any question or thought now? I feel sorry for those people. Huh? I feel sorry for the people that they were after. Yeah! Oh, heck yeah. I do too. But it gets worse than this, but this is still pretty bad. Uh, it was the time that this is the brutal way of the time. We're very much more civilized today. Oh yeah, especially during Nazi Germany. Oh uh, yeah. I mean, that may not have been Christians, but that's what they did. They went into the Jewish quarters and hauled them out and well, we all know what yep. they did. And I'm sure it happens today in other places. Oh yeah. So we don't have to go back that far. We we are 
more civilized here, and it's hard for us to imagine that that was allowable, even. You know? And how can you defend yourself against this? Anyway, okay, here we go. <clears throat> Saul immediately gathered some companions for the trip. And leaving on the morning of Monday, September 23rd, they traveled from 6 a.m. to noon, took a two-hour rest, then traveled from 2 to 6, and covered an average of 30 miles a day. That's just walking. They expected to arrive in Damascus 130 miles away sometime Friday morning, plenty of time before the Sabbath began on Friday evening. So if you're talking 30 miles a day, you, you say that's just walking, but that's walking at a good clip. That's a good clip. You're not messing around. No, but you're, all, but you're obviously not on donkey or a horse either. Yeah. You are walking, and you're in a hurry. Yeah, you're, you're talking, if it's 30 miles a day, you're talking about, let's see, how many hours is that? Six, seven, eight, Ten. nine, ten hours, that's about three miles per hour. That's a good walk mm -hmm. on some of those roads. Mm -hmm. Okay? But doable. And they were used to it. Yeah, walking was the way to do it. So, anything else you see here that you want to talk about or to understand? You take the break in the afternoon. You always take a rest. Okay, here we go. Acts 9, 3 through 6. Now as he went on his way, he approached Damascus, and suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. And falling to the ground, he heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And he said, Who are you, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, who you, whom you are persecuting. But rise and enter the city, and you will be told what you are to do. What happened? Put it in your own words. Well, the, the light was something he would not have understood, not have expected. Okay. The voice is something he would not have expected. Clearly the voice must have been different from his companions. It just doesn't tell us that yet. Yeah, but, but when he asked, you know, who are you, that, that says I don't recognize the voice. Correct. He doesn't know, he doesn't even know who he's persecuting. Mm -hmm. Why are you persecuting me? Well, it says, who are you? Mm -hmm. Anything else you see here? He well, that my wife always used to say, like, when David first came out, you can be really negative against something until you put a face to it. And up to that point, Paul, or Saul, uh -huh. he did not have a face to put this <sighs> against. Now, all of a sudden, he has something to push against, or is pushing against him, and can say, okay, you know. Interesting. Yeah, and I've seen this happen several times. My mom would be a good example of this. When, and I'll use my son, you know he's not here. When he first came out, he absolutely demanded to be the one to tell her. Up to that point, my mom was like salt. She persecuted, hmm. persecuted in front of her congregation, the LGBT people. Right. When her grand, and I've got the article in the Seattle Times, they were doing a series on differences of people, mm -hmm. of which he happened to, I don't know how it happened, was chosen for that group. And it was like she had done, gone through that, that life experience, because when he came out, she came out, they were in their, her kitchen, and we were next door at my sister's, and it reminds me of that, because I can't help but think that something came over my mother. Okay. Whether it was that bright light type of experience or whatever it was, I think it was my son's face. Because all of a sudden, here is a person who had been condemning, right. who had been very, very vocal against right. the gay community. All of a sudden... So instead of the general impression it's a very specific, personal thing. Yeah, because okay. he, his face was in hers, and right. she said in the article, I said, if I had known you were going to do that, I would have brought it. Yeah. She said, God doesn't make garbage. God, my grandson, is okay. Okay. And that's what I think of in this, is that right. all of a sudden Saul had a face. 
He's about to get his faith anyway. Well, no, but, but yes. it all of a sudden it changed right. it, dynamics. This is the changing point, you're right, yeah. uh, where it gets personal, if you will. So, anything else? Right off the bat, he's being asked to have faith because it's <laughs> like, okay, here I am, but you go into the city, and then we'll tell and you And I'll what tell you what's going on. Oh, thank you. I love time to think about this. Okay, here, here we go. Let's see what he says about it. Acts 22, 6 through 8. While I was on my way and approaching Damascus, about noon, a great light from heaven suddenly shone about me. I fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to me, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? I said, he said to me, I am Jesus of Nazareth, whom you are per persecuting. Okay, so, any, anything different in his own way of say, having said about this? It looks the same. Again, we have a name now all of a sudden. We have Jesus of Jesus the Nazarene or Jesus of Nazareth. Okay? There's a very specific thing. Okay, now he's got a, not just this sect. Well, it's Jesus. So, so Jesus was a fairly common name. So Jesus of yes, Nazareth sure. narrows it down. Here's the one you're you Correct. Know. Yeah, it's Yeshua or Joshua of Nazareth from Nazareth. Yeah. So it's a very specific term. Excellent. Anything else? Yeah, that's, again, I'll come back to not my son. My gardener. Your gardener, okay. His son, who's an adult, his name is Jesus. Uh huh. Uh -huh. the Spanish pronunciation of Jesus. Right. And when he was, when I, when he was at my house yesterday and did his job, and he said, You need to make my name out of it, not my dad's. I said, Okay, what's your name? Jesus. And all of a sudden I drew a blank how to spell it. And then as I went in the house to get my checkbook, it began to put a smile on my face. And then I had to stop myself when I went back out not to say Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, so what you have is, according to these two anyway, isn't it? You have a bright light. Okay. And you have a voice speaking. That's all I need to say. It's actually, yeah. he is hearing words, or he's hearing the concept uh, that's being involved here. Okay? We also don't have any evidence that his companion saw the light or heard the voice. Ah, let's go on to that for a moment. I didn't realize that Jesus was a real common name then. Well, I don't remember that. Jesus is Yeshua, which is another form of Joshua. So that would be a fairly common name. Jesus is, what, is it the Latin or the... One of them. Which, and I wish we'd just change it back. All the Yeshua. Yeshua. Another thing here... <sighs> that would um, ruin all our songs. Oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only thing. There no, we, we couldn't because it would ruin all the songs. Right. But other than his name wasn't Jesus. But he calls... Him, the voice calls him by name. By name? This is specific. I know you. <laughs> I know exactly who you are. I know what you are doing. That's very interesting. you good point. <laughs> this is very detailed. <laughs> I know who you are. All right, here we go. On Thursday, September 26th, with 90 miles covered in three days, they got up and were on the road again. This is a road from uh, Canaan up to Syria. This is a Roman road. It's been worn down over the years, but this was a Roman road. And this was what helped the empire hold together, was roads. They traveled for five hours, about 15 miles, and this is a satellite of that 15 miles from there. So it's, this is about where it happened, is my funny little way of saying it. I like the way it turns. Kind of turn, curve, curve. This is it. They're right, it's right here. No doubt it was right here. <laughs> Saul slept here. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> okay. But this is this is approximately that location. Just, I couldn't help it. Okay. When suddenly an extremely bright light surrounded Saul like a spotlight. Remember he said, I, I was surrounded by the light. Was this the Shekinah? Was this the light of God? 
I just simply ask that as a question. Well, from a from from a uh, uh, biological point of view, the light doesn't have to be an external source. If you lose your sight or whatever, what what is the reaction of your optic nerves? And so, mm. it it may very well have been only Paul saw this bright light. Well, we're going to find out that's not quite the Saul. case. Either way, um, others will be part of this, and we're, we need to explore what's going to happen. Suddenly, at least to Saul, there was a bright light. <coughs> and I keep thinking of that spotlight, a big light coming down through the clouds, and that's just for fun. But I don't care. It doesn't really matter. Um, it could be a... What is a supernova, but really tiny? I don't know. Just for... I, don't know. <laughs> Sorry. But I think the Shekinah. It is the Shekinah. This, yes. it's Jesus was surrounded by this light a couple times. Let's just call it what it is. This is the light of God. Okay, and he is getting someone's attention here. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> there was also a loud sound, and all dropped to the ground. There may even have been vibration in the air to knock them over. I don't know that. It doesn't say that. But light and sound, it could be, you know, knocking the guy over. I, you know, Saul knew, however, that he had been blinded. Already he knew that. He was quite aware of that. Well, and the thing is, this is an experience they're trying to explain in human words. Right. They and he. Yeah. So he's trying to explain it, but again, how do you explain it? Acts 9, 7. The men who were traveling with him stood speechless, hearing the voice, but seeing no one. Okay. What happened to the people around him, the travelers with him? Well, so if they heard a voice and didn't yes. see an, a, a source of that voice, that's a little confusing. Yeah, and that would be like, oh, I think I'll shut up and listen more carefully here, even me. They're hearing a voice. That doesn't say they heard what it said. No, but no, doesn't. But they heard a voice. And, but from no source that they knew of. Mm -hmm. But that's kind of like, you know, the post sign comes something like that, and Ken, you, you've spent your whole life in this situation. Go to the airport. You are constantly in a situation where a voice is going across. You don't know who that person is. You uh -huh. don't know. You may, might be able to figure out it's a man or a woman, but this voice is coming from the ceiling. Right. Yes. And it's telling you information. <laughs> and that's the closest, in my idea, well. of what's going on. Or you go to a sporting event, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden, like a sister and I did it for 27 years at Husky Stadium. You're getting, especially as the game gets closer, you're getting constantly bombarded by this voice. Right. Not a light, but just this voice. Right. Oh, but this, but this in, is a in this different case, situation. Well, of course, and, of yeah. course it is, but that's You're the closest I can... Yeah. You're out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, yeah but this is the closest I, I can yes, be Yes, I, I agree. But and these, a voice come yeah. out of nowhere. And these guys had never heard an a, a electronic yeah. uh, voice so, before. A loudspeaker system. Yeah. Um, it, it's going to stop. It's going it to it stop them cold. It just... They mm -hmm. didn't know okay. what to do. It, they just shut up and, wow. They're hearing some, they call it a voice. They don't say it's a word. They don't say they can comprehend what's being said. They simply call it a voice. But they don't know where it's coming from. Okay. Acts 22, 9. Now, those who were with me saw the light but did not hear the voice of the one who was speaking to me. Now this one is, this, this is translation is different. This says, I did not understand. Not what does your translation say? I'm not in that. Oh, sorry. That okay, I did. Chapter. Let me look. Thank you. The, the point is, though, this is different from what we've just heard because they didn't say anything about them seeing the light. Correct. This is Paul remembering. Yeah. yeah. The other one was Luke's, uh, Luke's received version of it. So, and he's yeah. recording both of these. What, is it, okay. what does your translation say? Uh, now those who were with me saw the light, but did not understand the voice of the one who was speaking to me. Okay, so they only heard the voice, but now we know they also saw a light. 
So they see a light, they hear a voice, and don't understand a thing. They don't understand what the voice might be saying. Even though Saul understands it's talking directly to him. He understands the message is for him. Mm -hmm. I know you. <laughs> okay? Go ahead. Well, I just was thinking that uh, if no one else understood the voice, that would that would give it more... Um, uh, it might make you pay more attention to that because it's directed to you. I know you. Watch out. Okay. You know. Yeah, I'm sure Saul, when he, he see, he tells us this is what happened. He didn't know it at the time that they didn't understand anything. Hmm. Yeah. It, it was he understood it, talking directly to him. He sees the light. He and then later he tells, well, they saw a light and they heard a voice, but they didn't see anybody that could be making this voice. I mean, we've all heard things that have shocked us for one reason or another. <laughs> and Speechless. <laughs> this, this, no doubt, had to have been one of those. I would think so. All right, here we go. Then everyone except Saul got to his feet. Saul had heard his name called Lousy, and it, loudly, <laughs> sorry, and it got his attention. Thanks. <laughs> Uh, okay, so he hears someone and it's, I know you, you, personal, this is directly personal. And now he's going to go, oh, well, maybe I should pay attention. Acts 9, 8 and 9. This one has him getting up also. Fine. Saul rose from the ground yes. and although his eyes were opened, he saw nothing. So they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. And for three days he was without sight, and neither ate nor drank. Oh, come on, what's happened? Go ahead and summarize this for me. What do you see? Well, so, fasting was a common thing that had happened uh, in those times, and, and even in today. Uh -huh. uh, so, the fast might be, okay, something important has come, I need to do something about this. And if he's blind, what else can he do? Mm, okay. So, so that, that I, may be... I agree that fasting is an issue here. Yeah. But... Is there other reasons for fasting? Well, sure. What? Well, there's a number of them. One, you don't have any food. Oh, well, mm, yeah. Okay. Uh, it, it, sometimes it, it is... Uh, That's just... O obedience to God okay. or... Yes. or uh, uh, a sacrifice to God. Okay, yes. Okay. Um, go ahead. I don't know. Well, I think also he had been told to go there and that he would be told what to do. And so he, he's in Damascus. He can't see anything. He's kind of, he must have been an emotional wreck <laughs> having gone through all of this. And I think he just was probably praying and asking what in the heck is going on okay. and fasting would have been a part of this at this deep it's part of the prayer system as well it's also part of healing it's part of the, the, the medical thing that is you fast when you're ill to help with healing you may have been something you ate or whatever like that I don't know the detail there but that was not uncommon then also so in his sacrificial, or in his prayer life and fasting, he's talking to God, but he's also doing this healing fasting. So there's a lot of things going together here, okay? And then he neither ate nor drank, it says. Mm -hmm. For three days, I don't buy the concept, but I'm sure he was careful to not drink much. Well, maybe that was, you know, he didn't have any wine or whatever. Well, you, <laughs> you, you, actually, they didn't normally drink wine. the human body can go three days without drink. Right. But yes. not many more. Yeah. But, you know, not 40. Okay. So, he gets up, can't see, and they lead him by hand. Anything else? That we'll part had to be very humbling. Because up to uh, that point, he was Paul, the leader. Paul was, was the leader. Yep. You're well, right. and, and to humble himself was probably part of this whole picture. I'm sure it was. <laughs> Hello. Okay, here we go. Acts 22, 
10 through 11. <clears throat> I asked what I am to do, Lord. The Lord said to me, get up and go to Damascus. There you will be told everything that has been assigned to you to do. Since I could not see because of the brightness of that light, those who were with me took my hand and led me to Damascus. What has this added? What has it added? Uh, he's going to be told everything that it's his job to do. God's decided he's got a job. Right. He's going to be told, he's going to be informed in some fashion what's coming, what, what God is asking of him. Okay? What he is to do. This is not a requirement. He doesn't have to do it. He can die. He can sit there and do nothing, well, be a faith. beggar. But this is what God wants him to do. His faith is being really tested. Oh, yeah. First time. First time that's happened, too. Before it was the, the, the Jewish faith, it was this nameless thing. Now it's personal and it's very specific. Well, and he is a godly man. Yes. And he, he <laughs> fervently knows, so. He knows. I mean, he's got to be pretty convinced that this is, you know, voices from on high. <laughs> and it's telling him that you have work that is a point. I am appointing you to do these things. Yes. This is what I am asking and expecting you to do. Yes. And he's got to take that very, very seriously. I think you're right. Okay. Anything else before we get into some of the detail? Okay. Here we go. Saul settled down to listen. Then, in a matter-of-fact voice, Saul heard his name again. Saul, why are you out to get me? Now, that's my funny way of putting it. Sorry. He heard. But his companions heard only a noise. They heard, but they didn't hear the understanding of it. It hurts you to oppose God, the voice said. That's the proper translation of that. You know, that's, isn't that true for all of us? <laughs> when yeah. we are trying to oppose God or go against Him, it's harmful to us. It hurts us. Yeah. It feels very uncomfortable at the very least. Who are you? Saul's companion heard him say. But they saw no one but Saul. He's gone crackers. Let's get the white coat out and strap it behind him. Well, if they were if they were hearing a sound, right? I mean, that's yeah. Yeah, and he's responding to the sound. Hmm. Okay, he's talking to the sound. I am Jesus of Nazareth, whose followers you are pursuing," said the voice. Saul responded, "What do you want of me?" The voice said. I want you to get up and go into Damascus. Think about what you have been doing. You will tell others what you know, and you will open the eyes of the blind so that they may see that I am the Messiah. I'm filling in the gap. Question, thought, or comment? I think that line down there says, open their eyes. I don't think it literally means that he's going to, not, I mean, maybe he did, but that doesn't, just, I don't think it means um, physical. You're, we're blind to different things. Correct. And I think he's saying, okay, you're going to be given the charge to go out and help people see the, that, the, the message. Correct. That's exactly correct. It's not a physical thing. It's a spiritual thing. Okay? Good. At least that's my opinion also. So Saul got up, and his companions led him toward Damascus for another four hours till dusk on Thursday. They didn't make it. Okay, they still had distance to go. But they couldn't put out that three mile per hour pace anymore. Okay, so they started walking slowly. <laughs> Lucky to get a mile per hour at this one. So they get some distance. But their speed was greatly reduced because of Saul's blindness, and they were only able to cover about ten miles. Then on Friday, they traveled all day just to cover the remaining 15 miles. I think they took a cab. Yeah, yeah, they should have called Uber or something. 
<laughs> and they arrived in Damascus well before the Sabbath began at 6 p.m. And this is this Damascus Gate. This is the eastern gate of Damascus as it was 30, 40 years ago. Now that wall and gate looks as though it might be Roman, but that yeah. tower looks it's, more contemporary. It's just, yeah, this has nothing to do with it. It's just the right location. Oh. So okay. is that a Roman? <laughs> I don't know. Oh. I haven't studied the But that trust on it, when he went on that walk with those people, he had to put his total trust in them because there were some, obviously yes. there were issues on a very personal level that yeah. had to be taken care of for a human. And it, 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 like I say, for Paul, who had basically had never been in that position before, all of a sudden he's in a very vulnerable, vulnerable position. Yeah, vulnerable. I like that word. Yes. Thank you. Uh, more than more than that, he has been uh, he has been Saul has been awakened by Jesus of Nazareth. His companions, who had agreed with him before to pursue the followers of the way. Would not be in positive. They have no. They don't know. They about don't know this. what's going on. They would. Their mission is still part of go get them, while his is being changed. So he's being led by people who he no longer believes the way they believe, and they would have been zealot-like. This is a very difficult well, we time for him in time of faith. We don't honestly know the belief of those people. We only know that they were with him and that they, they may have been ordered to follow this guy and do what he says. Ordered by people who wanted them to yeah. pursue the followers of the way. Yeah. So my only assumption is, regard, is that they were in that mood of go get them. Mm -hmm. And now he was no longer in that mood. Maybe he started talking to them. I don't know. Okay, But either way, you have an issue of faith here, and mm -hmm. trust, and doubt. Well, and okay. no, no doubt at this point in time, Saul did not really know what, is, <laughs> yes. what, what he's going to be able to even say or do. I agree with you there. <laughs> so he certainly is going to be thinking a bit, isn't he? Mm -hmm. okay. Acts 22, 12. A certain... Ananias, who was a devout man according to the law and well spoken of by all the Jews living there. Okay. Who is this person? Just happens to he's being introduced here. He is devout according to what? The law. The Torah. He is devoted to the Torah. He's Jewish and well spoken of by those. So he's a respected person who is devout to the Torah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, he's going to love this. Acts 9, 10 through 12, is going to fill us in a little bit more about him. Now there was a disciple at Damascus named Ananias. The Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias. And he said, Here I am, Lord. And the Lord said to him, Rise, and go to the street called Straight. And at the house of Judas, look for a man of Tarsus named Saul. For behold, he is praying. Do you want me to go Keep to the Okay. And he has seen a vision of a man, seen in a vision a man named Ananias come in and lay his hands on him so that he might regain his sight. Okay. Now what's happened? Now we know more about this Ananias. Tell me about it. Well, he is a follower of the way. Whoa! Thought he was a Jew follower of the he, Torah. Well, he's... Were not most of the, uh, what I'm going to call believers in Christ, Jews at that time? Absolutely. So oh, well, what, yeah. this would be no surprise that he's Jewish. Ah, but, but he's, he's not a Hellenistic. No, he's not yeah. Hellenistic yet. He's, it doesn't seem to believe that Jesus was the Messiah. He's a devout Jew living in Damascus, and yet he's maybe secretly a disciple, or maybe he becomes a disciple later, and this is put back on to explain which Ananias it was. Don't know. But he's either a disciple then, or he becomes a disciple later. So, however, what it is, one thing is sure, he's going to have some doubts. He's being told to 
get up and go find this guy who's pursuing disciples. Ah, he must already have been a disciple, a follower, uh, because he's afraid. Yeah, mm -hmm. well, he's being informed by the Lord to go to the street called Straight. Here, I'm going to go to that. In Damascus, Saul would stay with a man called Judas on Straight Street. This is Straight Street today. It's been kind of built up a little bit. <laughs> okay. It's a souk. It's a marketplace. In the vision, the Lord asked Ananias to find Saul and even told him where to find him. He was informed that this Saul needed his eyes healed and that Ananias should lay his healing hands on Saul's eyes. Wow, that's pretty cool. God's asking you to do something. That's neat. You know, you get to go heal somebody. Acts 9, 13 to 16. But Ananias answered, Lord, I've heard from many about this man, how much evil he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priests to bind all who call on your name. But the Lord said to him, Go, for he is a chosen instrument of mine to carry my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. For I will show him how much he must suffer for the sake of my name. Mm, okay, Ananias seems to have some kind of doubt, right? What, what are we dealing with here? Well, clearly he's afraid of this guy because of the persecution. <laughs> Darn right. So he is a follower in some fashion. Oh, yeah. Well, it said earlier he was a, he was a disciple. disciple. Yeah. So... Um, he's a Jewish following the Torah, so he's a Hebrew Messianic Jew. Mm -hmm. Okay, So he's followed the way, and he's being told, hey, go find this guy who will take you and put you into prison. Yeah. Hey, thanks, Lord. Love doing what you tell me. Gee, Lord, do you know what you are talking about? <laughs> Are, Are you, you sure, sure you've got the right guy? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> okay, now what is, now some of this may be added later, okay, as to the detailed work. But he's, he is to be an instrument. This is what Ananias is told, right? An instrument and what's going to happen to this guy? Suffer. He's going to go to the Gentiles and kings and Israel and I will show him how much he must suffer. Somehow that just, that's not what I want to hear when I'm thinking about becoming a follower or something, you know? It's about suffering. Well, but clearly he did. Clearly Saul would understand that if he became a follower, he was going to suffer. I'm sure of that. And this is something that he did come to understand quickly. I'm just not sure Ananias was told this. But we do know that Saul would have figured that out rather quickly. Because look what he was doing to the people. And, yeah, and... And you love traitors. The moment, they, the moment someone who is for you is suddenly against you, you just kind of hate them all that much more. But he was so profoundly moved and changed by this encounter yep. and what followed, that all that, you know, tells later in other places, all that suffering was nothing. No. Nothing. Are like, we told anything about how the, these men that helped him, the way they turned? I find that fascinating. None. These guys, no word. You know, they leave and take on this mission, and all of a sudden one of them has changed radically. And they come out of their, you know, out of their, uh, they stuck with their, what they thought was their mission <laughs> and what they believed brought him that far. And I'm real curious, did it change them? Well, we're we not, have, we have no word on that yeah, at all. We're not going to know, but presumably he told them as he was going along what was happening to him. No, I, I, only the basics that he was blind and he was told something maybe, but he may well have then been discussing with them. Mm -hmm. But who knows? We don't know if they were became disciples. We don't know if they went back to Jerusalem. We have no idea. Sorry, it's just not there. So Ananias was not thrilled to have been chosen to seek out to seek out Saul. He felt that he was risking his life by letting Saul know that Ananias was a follower of the way. 
Saul could be faking the condi condition or might not have changed his thinking and would turn on Ananias. I mean, Ananias had doubts. No doubt about it. No. <laughs> but he had trust. Uh, he had to have trust in God to do this. Acts 22, 13. came to me and standing beside me he said brother Saul regain your sight in that very hour I regained my sight and saw him okay simple very physical here Ananias came stood beside him regain your sight and he did he calls him brother yeah that's very interesting and it wasn't instantaneous well yeah well let's go look at the other source of this one Acts 9, 17 through 19a. So Ananias departed and entered the house, and laying his hands on him, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road by which you came, has sent me so that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And immediately something like scales fell from his eyes, and he regained his sight. Then he rose and was baptized, and taking food, he was strengthened. Okay, what do you see here? What's happened? What has been added here? Well, a conversion, a complete conversion. Okay. I mean, we, okay, so mechanically we see something came off of his eyes. Sure. Fine. Okay. But He lost his contacts. Yeah, but <laughs> filled with the Holy Spirit is... And there was that laying on of hands yeah. again. Good. Both for healing and for yeah. yes. transmitting or whatever. The Holy for Spirit. his brother, his as brother. you specifically mentioned. Mm -hmm. uh, and here he's also setting up a defense. He's saying, the guy who did this to you is standing, has told me to come here, so you don't bug me. You don't come in. It's kind of a defense, you know, to say that. Um, and then he says, and then you'll be filled with the Holy Spirit. Scales fell, sight restored. That's really weird because every other time when there was blindness or whatever, you didn't have no physical thing coming off yeah. of your eyes. That's kind of creepy, actually. <laughs> yeah, but after three days, it got kind of crusty. You know, I don't know. Who knows? It's kind of like cataracts if you think about it. Because when the doctor explained to me what a cataract is, the yeah. longer you have them, the more hard they are. Mm -hmm. That's and internal. It's not well. Well, well he yes and no. That. Yes and no. It's internal and it's under the lens. But it, what I'm saying is, I can see what the scale falling. Right. Because a cat, a cat in similar, it's a close again that I can come to. Right. <laughs> because a, a very dear friend's mother had cataracts, and I asked that. I said she um, felt that it went into her faith to go to a doctor to have her cataracts removed. And I asked the doctor, I said, is there a point when you have cataracts and can't see that they never, if removing them, would you would never get your sight back? And he said, no. He said, the longer you have a cataract and the longer you wait to have it removed, you, to, when they remove the cataract, determines the percentage oh. of your vision you regain. Okay. And I'm thinking Paul only had went through three days. Yeah. So, so whatever fell, whether it was dust in the eyes, the, the God, and I don't care. The physical doesn't matter to me at all in this, okay? It's that his sight was restored, okay? By his brother having brought the message to him, okay? Uh, then what happened? He doesn't say he received the Holy well, Spirit. He, he, said, he got and up and I was said, baptized. You will get it. He what? He was baptized. Baptized, good. Which... Presumably, he would have to consent to. One would think so, yeah. Okay, yeah. I agree with you. And, okay. All right, anything else? This is going to surprise you then. Here we go. Acts 22, 14 through 16. Then he said, The God of our ancestors has chosen you to know his will, to see the righteous one, and you hear his own voice, for you will be his witness to all the world of what you have seen and heard. And now, why do you delay? Get up, be baptized, and have your sins washed away, calling on his name. This is Ananias talking to him. Mm -hmm. Okay? What is he saying? 
This is the church, remember? We're all talking about the church here. Well, so number one, who, who is doing this? It's God, it's Jesus. Okay. Right. Okay, and then you're going to hear his voice. You have heard his voice. Yeah, but, but there's more. There's more. And then uh, uh, what you're going to do. Right. What's That's your it. future. Yes. And now get going. Get, get to it. You will be witness to all the world. There's the church. Oh, there goes the chill again. I know. <laughs> okay. Of what you have seen and heard. So get going. <laughs> Wait, dude, I just got my sight back. Get going. Yeah. Be baptized. Wash away your sins. Well, and clearly he's got to regain some strength because he's been without food and water. Ah, what a good idea. Despite his personal doubts, Ananias did seek out Saul and laid healing hands on Saul and reminded Saul of who it was that was to heal him. And I have prophesied Paul's future as the Lord's witness to all the people of the world. And I have also prayed that Saul would be filled with the Holy Spirit. And Saul's sight was restored. But Saul had changed. As a new person, he could see <laughs> that Jesus was the Messiah and that Jesus is the living Christ. He had received the Holy Spirit. Saul may well have been fasting since he was struck blind by the Lord on his way to Damascus, and he would have been hungry, but that was less important to him than to be baptized and to be a follower of the way. So Saul was baptized before he started to eat and regain his health. That is what's important. It's so important to him that it took precedent over food. Even if he was hungry, this is more important that I be baptized. The other thing that always gets me about Paul and his ministry is we see no evidence that he was trained very long in what we know about Jesus. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he no doubt did not have the four Gospels that we've got or <laughs> Acts. Yeah, he uh, sure didn't have them. But, but yet he was able to convince people very well of, of facts about Christ. Okay. That, and so part of that had to have been something that came from God. Agreed. Or something like that. He, he, didn't, he didn't have a script. He, at this point, had only his prejudice yeah. and this incident. That's all he had, is that... All your prejudice, dude, you're wrong. Now think it out and let's get working. You're going to work for me now. Oh, might have been his. But because of his very real experience, he had absolutely no doubt oh. that Jesus was the Messiah, yep, that Jesus was alive, yep. that Jesus was working in the world, yep. and this is what he was supposed to do. So he, right. that, you know, the gospel. Right, but he didn't know all the details. No. All he knew was his impression of it as a pursuer. Mm -hmm. So what's going to happen? You know, Go ahead. Another thing. Uh -huh. He knew his scriptures. Oh, yes. And as soon as he was convinced that Jesus was the Messiah, mm -hmm. his, you can just kind of go, think about his mind going back, prophets, psalms, prophecies all over the world, jinka, jinka, jinka. He would have probably started having all of these things kind of fall into place. And he would, because he was such a scholar of the Torah, uh -huh. he would have understood a lot more of Good. who Jesus was and what the message was going to be. Well, if you look at during Jesus' walk on earth, it was. It's very clear. It says that his followers were were not. Um, they weren't gifted with the uh, uh, understanding. The, the understanding. Yeah. They could see signs and they could hear words, but the understanding was prevented <laughs> until after Jesus' resurrection. Right. Because they were expecting the, the worldly. Yeah. Right. Worldly. Yeah. yeah. But the other side of that that I look at. Think how different it would have been if God had chosen really top, my words, top door scholars 
who'd use flowery words and knowledge that the rest of us can't understand to begin this <laughs> process versus taking from the very beginning with the 12 disciples, spreading the word with the common man. Yep. Mm -hmm. they, they, they didn't have that gift and God didn't want them to have it. He wanted to begin at the beginning in a very simplified form because that's who he's going out to. You know, I think about would a college professor have had the success in a sense that these disciples did. And I'm thinking, Now a no. college professor doesn't talk in the human language. Right. And I'm, so I'm saying, <laughs> you know, there is a reason God did this. Yes. There's no Absolutely. doubt. It's like, uh, he started right from the beginning. He took Mary, a common person. He did everything with common people, uh, not the, the bureaucrats and such. Yeah, and, and I like Ann's, so, the way you phrase it, you know, this, all of a sudden, all these things, are, he's been taught and learned as a scholar, if you will. Yeah. All of a sudden, he's going back and, and redoing and it. And rethinking it. saying, there's a different way to look at this now. Very good. Yeah, I like that. We're going to get back to that. Acts 9, 19b through 22. Okay, 19b through 22. Okay. For some days he was with the disciples at Damascus. And immediately he proclaimed Jesus in the synagogue, saying, He is the Son of God. And all who heard him were amazed and said, Is this not the man who made havoc in Jerusalem of those who called upon this name? And has he not come here for this purpose, to bring them bound before the chief priests? But Saul increased all the more in strength and confounded the Jews who lived in Damascus by proving that Jesus was the Christ. Okay, what does it tell you? He'd been completely changed. Yes. People were really, they didn't know what to think about <laughs> he came to do this and now he's Doing preaching. Exactly Jesus. opposite of it. Yeah. But, but I think, you know, and I hadn't thought about it, because that's I think confirms it, that because he now is so sure, he, you know, he's met Jesus, yep. he's met the Messiah, he can go back and say, yeah, say the Messiah says this about the Messiah, and that means this. And da, 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 da. Yes. So he was able Very good. with what he already knew Correct. to preach. But yeah. when I when I read that he was proving that Jesus was the Messiah, in my mind, he also had to uh, obtain new information that hadn't clicked. <sighs> Had yes. To. Yes, I agree. Here's my interpretation of exactly that. After Saul had been baptized, he knew that he must unlearn what he thought he knew about the way and must come to understand the good news of God's salvation through his Messiah, Jesus the Christ. So he spent the next days questioning, learning, and understanding the gospel. Then he went to the synagogue and began to share the way of salvation that God now offered. In other words, in those few days, those several days, he's putting it all back together, reintegrating it, understanding it, for his own sake. And then now he gets to the point where he says, now I think I can actually communicate. So he's learning from the disciples there, the people who are of the way in Damascus. And he says, now I want to go to the synagogue and I want to talk. Because I see the truth of all yes. of the prophecies and everything. Yes, more so than they ever saw. Yeah. Okay, you were absolutely right on that. So it, now he takes those few days and he puts it together enough to go out and say, this was the Messiah. And he is our way of salvation. Any question, thought, or comment? Next we will encounter Peter and Cornelius.